as uh, group CEO, I've uh, been in this role for a little while now, which has been great. It sort of largely arose out of the, uh, the when the organisations came together, the IPA and the IFA in 2015. So I became group CEO at that point and uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. So I enjoy dealing with our team. I think our team are fantastic. They've got, everyone's got the right approach when it comes to members, understanding that everything we do is for members and the benefit of members. And then in terms of the exter external facing, you know, engaging with members uh, almost on a daily basis. I mean, I still, uh, I set myself a target when I, when I became CEO to actually contact every single new member. And I still do that today. Uh, so I either call or I'll text message each member and say hello and pass on my details. Um, some members think it's uh, computer generated. I can guarantee you it's not. Uh, it is my number and uh, so members save that number and they'll reach out if they need something. And I think it's really important, um, not as a gesture of, um, you know, some sort of way for, for me to, 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 to buffet myself in front of members, but it's really about ensuring the organisations, we set the tone that everything we do is about members and understanding members and engaging. And I think that does uh, affect the rest of the team. Um, quite often when I engage with new members, I'm the second or third person that they've spoken to, which is important, um, but it's a great way to hear directly from members about what we do. So I think the thing I love is engaging with members and then of course the other extension of that is trying to achieve great policy outcomes for members as well. Well I can say hand on heart, I've never once got up out of bed and thought can't do it today. So every day I've got up with a bit of a spring in the step. Now I say to my friends and family that I'm really passionate about accounting, they look at me funny because they think, how can you be? But when you explain the work that gets done by a profession, by our members in our profession, realising that every aspect of life is affected by an accountant in some form. And so we have a tremendous responsibility to make sure we do that in a responsible way, but understanding that the human interface is really where it's at. So people in our profession is our uh, is really the, the, the critical aspect. Our organisation hinges on the notion that we exist to improve people's quality of life. We do that by ensuring our members are as well supported as possible. So I think the notion for me is that connection to people, understanding that we have that direct impact on people's life, it is, is really what puts a spring in my step and, and try to demystify those, those myths that exist about accountants being something other than tremendously energetic and dynamic. Yeah, sure. So I became, I became Group CEO in 2015 when the IPA and the IFA came together. Prior to that, I was CEO of the IPA. We changed the name in 2011. And then, of course, when uh, in 2007, I actually joined the organisation in a policy-facing role. And so it's been quite an evolution, quite a long time working in the professional body. But the organisation has changed dramatically. So I think we've been able to show that we can move with the times. And if I look back to early experiences back in 2007, at the time, uh, Roger Cotton was the chief executive, the late Roger Cotton, who was a tremendous influence on many at the National Institute at the time. Uh, and I came across from a, a treasury role, um, working predominantly in Canberra, um, having been an accountant myself, but starting out my career in education. And so it's been a, a very interesting journey. I'd say that the blend of government experience, education experience, and also the work I did in policy here at the, uh, at the Institute, uh, provide a, a decent blend to add some value as CEO. So I, I really love it, I enjoy it. I love reaching out and engaging with other chief execs uh, across our profession. Of course, in the IFAC network, we're one of, the, um, uh, one of the 30 largest professional bodies around the world, and it means we engage with CEOs and leadership of other professional bodies and share those insights. So it's, it's great fun, and I enjoy it, and it's um, not without its challenges. So I was appointed at the age of 28, uh, initially as CEO, and that was a big step. I appreciate at the time a big step for the board, a bit of a gamble. Um, my wife would probably tell you that I've been like 45 for the last 20 years. I mean, I I've, I've, uh, was probably a more mature 28 year old. Um, but it was a challenge at the time, I suppose, them to take and a risk to take. And uh, I remember the first discussion I had with the team when after becoming CEO saying, I don't actually have all the answers. So one of the lessons I learned in that process is from a leadership perspective, for a CEO to be able to show a degree of vulnerability can also dis display a great, a great sense of strength. 
So be able to say to a team, I don't have all the answers, but we want to work together, I, I think is a really important thing for the team to understand that we will continue to learn and evolve together. And, and I think we've proved that we can do that. Um, it does come a point in time where CEOs have to make decisions and um, it can at times be a little lonely, but I've really benefited from a great team to work with, but also a wonderful board. Um, and so our board at the moment is made up of some really passionate people of our profession who run their own businesses, who are incredibly supportive. And I think I'd point to the examples during COVID where our board were, it was like hand in glove. They were there focused intently on the well-being of our team. And that sent a very clear message about what our organisation is about. Um, you know, we do put a lot of effort into making sure people feel that they are supported, that their family is supported, whatever their circumstances are, that always comes first. And I think some businesses will focus more on the bottom line and say we want to get that result. I can say hand on heart that I will always support someone who says I've got a family issue, I need some help. Uh, that will always come first and work is a very distant second to family and personal. I think seeing the impact that we can have um, and the immense change that's affecting our profession gives me a great sense of passion and drive that we can be part and influence that change together. And I think if we get member insight, member input, uh, we can then have those conversations with people making decisions about the direction of our profession. So there's a real sense of that, that, that uh, junction of either we continue going the way we've always gone as a profession, or we can start doing the same things perhaps in new ways and different ways. And I speak to specifically, you know, sustainability reporting creates an enormous opportunity. So what does that mean for a smaller practitioner? That shouldn't just be the domain of the big four. So I get really excited by the work we do, excited by the fact we give small business a voice, and we've got the runs on the board in relation to small business policy outcomes as well. So I think the work that our members do day in, day out, and the research that we've done proves the fact that members have a direct impact on people they work with, so the small businesses and, and the clients they work with. And that's never been uh, more clear for me when we did the research piece with Deakin University in relation to mental health and wellbeing. And of all the things we've done as an organisation over the time that I've been involved, I'd say, I'd put a hand on heart and say, that's the one thing I'm really proud of that we're able to bring a face to the work of our profession, to say that our work is actually human in primary nature, and that we focus our efforts on supporting people's mental health and wellbeing. And that led to the development of the Counting On You program, which has now trained almost 4,500 professionals across the country in mental health and wellbeing. And that was supported by the federal government. Now that wouldn't have happened if we didn't have member voice in the process. Realising that an accountant plays a really critical intermediary role in supporting the, the well-being of their clients. In addition to that, understanding that accountants themselves need support. So we've put in place services like Uprise to give members access to a counsellor when and if they need it. So bringing that human dimension to our work, I think is the one, one of the things that I'm most proud of. Well, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing, so long as our board is happy. I know it's, I've been in the role for some time, um, but I, it does take a while, I would say, to get across the global network that we belong to and to leverage that. I'm confident we have much more growth uh, in our sites that's available to us and we'll continue to advocate for members in a really strong way. But I'm really excited about the future that's coming, as I said, about sustainability reporting and the changing profile of our work. And I think if we can add value as we go and prove our value, that's really uh, enormously uh, yeah, beneficial for our community. I think also that um, the way we might shape education, so as a professional body, we play a role in certification. Um, but looking at a, a completely new competency-based assessment model, which will transform the way we bring accountants into our profession. For many years, employers have been saying they are not getting graduates with the requisite skills. We've taken that mantle up and for the last 18 months we've been building a new competency framework which will completely revolutionise pathways for people coming into our profession. So I'm really excited about that and, and that certainly puts wind in the sails to keep doing what we're doing to add value to members but ultimately to the community. I think the IPA should be really proud of the, the achievement we've had in relation to mental health and wellbeing. And I think also predominantly putting small business at the centre of policy conversations. 
There are plenty of organisations who claim to be uh, spokespersons for small business, but our organisation with our network of 5,000 accounting practices uh, across the group um, deal with small business issues every day. So who better to speak to and speak on behalf of small business than, than the IPA and our members? And so I'm really proud of that policy direction, proud of the mental health and wellbeing support, and perhaps most proud of the quality of the team that we have who are so committed day in, day out to serving members. You know, the size of our team in headcount hasn't changed from an IPA perspective uh, you know, in any substantive way since the days I became CEO, and which shows me that we are doing more with the same number of people. So our team work incredibly hard day in, day out to get great outcomes for members, and that will continue to be the case, and respecting at every step the fact that we exist, our lights turn on in our offices because members pay their fees. We should never lose sight of that and continually engage with members at every step.